All right, we'll take your Bibles and turn to the book of 1 John. Thank you, girls, for singing. Well, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about your tr Christmas tracks that are back there. Uh, that sounds exciting. Hope that you'll get some of those and, and hand, hand them out. Um, we were down in Miami Beach. Um, I think this would have been maybe uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, we were we were going around and uh, <coughs> trying to work on this one particular section, and um, most of the places were locked and just wasn't able to, to get in, you know. And and uh, just going down the road, and I was walking behind this couple, and uh, this couple got to the end of the street, and they they made a dreaded mistake. They turned around, you know. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, that's just fair game when they do that, right? And uh, so I just uh, went up and began a conversation with them. Ended up talking to them for probably ten minutes. Really nice couple. Um, they were from Germany, and um, he uh, works for a company that's in, involved with the cruise ships and different things, and they spend um, four to six months in the States every year, and uh, somewhere between New York and then Newport Ritchie, where they have uh, a, lot of, a lot of boats type stuff is there, and then uh, down here in Miami, and uh, they were um, enjoying the warm weather. You know, uh, it says a lot warmer than, than Germany, and I can imagine they were, they were correct, you know. But... Um, of course, so I invited them to church and, and talked to them for a little bit. And uh, they said, you know, we're, we've been here. We, we haven't been to Miami before. We were wondering about a church because Christmas is coming up. They don't know anything about anything. I'm pretty convinced. But they were curious about the church just simply because it was Christmas time. And uh, they know that. And it's very true that there's a, a greater awareness of, of spiritual things around Christmas time. So I hope you'll take advantage of those. And then the other thing is just, hey, listen, tracks work. You know that? Tracks work. Um, we were just at the gas station on the way between Miami Beach, Beach and here. Stopped and, and got the girls slushies. And um, I got a Coke and a chocolate chip cookie, if i got to be completely honest. And um, uh, we talked to the lady behind the counter. Said she had a church that she would go to, but she said that uh, she would come and visit the church sometime. And, uh, you know, the, the more you talk to people, the more you can tell whether or not people are lying to you. Right? Like they say, they're going to come and then they would never show up, right? But this lady was very sincere. And um, anyway, she was uh, sitting there and I said, you just never know what a track's going to do. Uh, it's an invitation to church, has your information on there. And then uh, just uh, as well, of course, got the gospel. And how many times have you given somebody a track and as you walk away, you turn around to look at it and they're reading it, right? The gospel does get out of the uh, out uh, in your community uh, based on tracks. Hope you will take advantage of those. I'm going to grab some and try to give them out around where I'm staying, and uh, so hopefully you will be able to do uh, the same. Well, have you had a good afternoon? I asked Shamir if he did anything exciting this afternoon, and he said no. And I asked him if he took a nap, and he said yes. And I said that was it very exciting. You know, I'm like, did you get it your Sunday afternoon nap? I hope that you did, right? I didn't get one. And uh, we were running around, uh, going down to Miami and back, and that was fun, driving on 95, so I had to be awake for that, I suppose. My mother-in-law would have gotten upset at me if I wasn't, and uh, so I tried to keep her happy with me. And uh, so, But anyway, we have had a, a wonderful afternoon, and I hope that you've had uh, the same. I, I didn't ask if I could do this, but I thought that it might be appropriate just before we get started here for a few minutes for a time of testimony. Uh, if God's been working in your life a certain way over the past uh, couple weeks, months, whatever it, it may be, um, so as a result of a sermon or, or whatever it may be, um, just uh, give a chance for a time of testimony here this evening before we before we dig into the word. Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, I'd like to uh, I'd like to share something. Um, you know, it's it's uh, I've been uh, pastor asked me earlier this week to do the, uh, the teen challenge. I, I had that kind of actually surprised me because I figured he would, we would have the teens in here again to hear you, and I'm sure and I'm sure after what God placed on my heart. I'm sure the teens would have rather been in here listening to your message. I'm sure it was a lot more positive than the one God gave them, God gave me to share with them. But no, it, it's kind of reopened my awareness. The, what I preached re, kind of reopened my need to to share the gospel. So, amen. You know, it's amazing as as a preacher, um, the Bible has to work you over before you can preach it. You know, and that's the way it often does. And, I wish somebody had told me that before I went into the ministry. You know? But I'm telling you, you're just always studying the Word, and I'm telling you, it breaks you over the coals, doesn't it? And uh, so that's good. Praise the Lord. So he's studying to prepare to um, preach to others, and, and God works on him. But fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Any, anybody else? Uh, a testimony? I know that 
Yes. God has taught me a lot over the last few months. Um, I'm trying not to live in the what if, or what if, or what if, or what if. We're not to live in the what if, we're to live in the what is. And what is, is that God is all powerful. He can take care of me. God is all present. He's always with me. And God is all knowing. He knows what I need. Amen. And I'm living in the what is, not Amen. the what is. And the message this afternoon in Miami Beach was talking about how God is sovereign, you know? And he knows. And uh, has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? Right? That was something that was mentioned in Miami uh, Beach this, this afternoon. Yes, sir, Brother John. I've been seeing more and more people going through personal tragedies. And it happened to us on a number of occasions. We lost our first daughter at birth. And some had a tragic car wreck, car wreck 36 years ago. But every time God brings you to something like this, He always uses it to draw you closer to Him. Right now, it's just being separated from my wife, and uh, things are just not working out, and she can get down here quite yet. But uh, it's, it's a minor trial, but still, there's a lot of people going through worse things than us. And if you just remember, it brings you closer to God. If you let it, you can also push Him away. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just thinking as He was, he was talking that God also uses tragedies in, in our life so that when that happens in other people's lives, we can uh, empathize and, and help them. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, who says, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Uh, somebody, somebody else. These are good. Yes, sir? Mr. Char. Um, my, my boss sends out like um, these. Can y'all hear him back there? <laughs> My boss sends out scripture verses like daily. Like he's got like a chain uh, a message mail basically. And so we were uh, one of one of the ones was in Colossians three this week, uh, where it talked about you know you do things heartily as unto the Lord right. and not unto men. And then you know being fervent in spirit. It's uh, it's parallel with, with like in Ephesians uh, five and six. But, um, no, just, uh, at least for me, God's been working on me as far as, like, being, okay, don't uh, be complacent. Don't, you know, don't be a slacker. Don't it'd be somebody that, okay, uh, you, you have to give full attention and give due diligence uh, in order for not only uh, for the work to be accomplished because it's, it's necessary, but also as far as because it's, it, it's it's you're serving God. It's not just okay trying to please the boss or trying to do this or that, but rather it's 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 unto the Lord. Yeah. And so regardless of whatever the task is, is that you know God is worthy of your utmost effort, and then not allowing. Well, you touched upon it with your Sunday school as far as like the cares of this world and stuff like that that will want to like get you distracted or weigh you down and that kind of thing and then you know it's like okay you, you need to have because our time is short and it's God that we're serving you know those those other things really don't you, yeah, I mean you have to give attention to them but the thing is they don't take they should never take the precedence that a lot of times we give sure. to them so that you know God has preeminence so that when you know we stand before them we're not going to be oh wow you know Shame they're having, you know, right. stuff that burns. You, you ever stop and think what, it, what where we would be if we didn't have the Word of God? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Charlie's testimony is just packed full of Scripture, right? It's got all these Bible verses that he's talking about that are helping to kind of focus his efforts, focus his path, and challenge him to, to do better. The time is short. All these things are scriptural, you know? And uh, aren't you so glad for the Scriptures? I'll give you just a, a brief testimony from, from my life. It's being here and uh, being out in Miami Beach and, and talking to uh, all the people there. I, I mentioned this uh, just briefly down in Miami, but I've met a lot of people who, who said that they know who Jesus is and that they have a relationship with Jesus. And um, But you ask them you know, anything about the Bible, or you ask them if they read the Bible, and their answer is no. So who is this Jesus that they know? Okay, It's not the Jesus of the Bible. Okay? They are uh, fabricating and manufacturing uh, who God is. And they call him Jesus, okay? because that's the name that we give. Right? Um, but they don't know who he is because they're not finding their descriptions of Jesus. They don't learn about Jesus from his word. They just pray to this Jesus every day. 
in hopes that they'll make it to heaven one day. And I, I just really, uh, just, just kind of hit me that the only way that we can know Jesus is through His Word. The only way we can know God is because He's given us the revelation of who He is. And uh, it is really just a challenge to me uh, to be in the Word more and more and more. And uh, trying to just uh, read. And so I can know who the true Jesus is. So when I talk to these people, I can accurately relay you know, who He is and uh, how they can have a relationship with, with Him. And uh, so I know that I've, I have just been uh, worked over the coals, uh, I suppose you could say it that way, uh, this week about just needing to know my Bible better. I've had a lot of conversations where I felt like, you know, I, I wish I would have said something different or, or known right off the top of my head, you know, what to say. And I've just been challenged to, to be more in the Word. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. You can't, you can't have too much of Jesus, can you? That means you can't have too much Bible. So dig in there and, and uh, find what God has for you. So, um, All right, so this morning uh, we talked about the assurance of salvation. Uh, the assurance of salvation, how you can know, K-N-O-W, for sure, uh, that your sins are forgiven and that you have a home in heaven. Of course, uh, the gospel is clear and it's simple and it's straightforward. You're a sinner because of our sin. We deserve to spend an eternity in hell. There's nothing you and I can do to forgive ourselves of our sins. We can't do enough good work uh, to counteract and overcome the sin debt that we owe. Uh, we cannot work our way to heaven, and so we have to have a Savior. And of course, His name is Jesus Christ, and when we trust in Jesus as the Son of God uh, to forgive us of our sins and to give us a home in heaven, He does exactly that. It's, it's just marvelous, isn't it? It's the best news anybody could ever hear. Uh, the news of the gospel, and then if we trust in that, uh, we can know uh, for certain. Of course, we talked some about uh, why we might uh, doubt those things, and of course the cure for any doubt that you have about your salvation is to just get yourself back in the book and to focus on what God has done for you and uh, your faith in Him. Now, we talked this morning about the assurance of salvation. I want to speak this evening on the subject of assurance, but I want us to discuss this evening the assurance of fellowship. The assurance of fellowship. In other words, are you in proper fellowship with the Lord? Okay? Now this is altogether a different animal than are you assured that you are saved? Are you with me? Okay. Uh, let me ask you this question. Um, is it possible to be saved and know it and be confident in your salvation, but yet be out of fellowship with the Lord. Is that possible? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. It is very um, um, possible. And um, in many cases, we're, it's certain we're all going to be there at some point in our life, right? Okay, so we can know for sure that we are saved. Can you know for sure that you are in a right fellowship with your Heavenly Father. And I believe that you can, and what I want us to do is use the book of 1 John uh, to discuss this subject. If I were to ask you, um, how, I'll just ask you this question. How many tests are there to determine if a person is saved based on the message you heard this morning? Just one. One! That, mess, that test is, what have you done with the Son? He who hath the Son hath life, who hath not the Son hath not life. So there is how many tests for salvation? One. There's one test for salvation. How many tests are there to determine if you are in proper fellowship with Jesus Christ? You don't know the number? Probably one. Huh? Probably one. A whole bunch. There's a bunch of them, right? Now, there's just test after test after test after test after test of that would answer this question, are you in proper fellowship with your Savior? Can I just um, tell you something that really annoys me? Well, I'm glad I'm going to anyway. I don't, I, I'm going to, right? Um, it annoys me most of the time when a preacher says he's going to preach on the assurance of salvation and he announces his text from the book of 1 John. Now, I did that this morning. 
But I announced it from 1 John chapter 5, verses 11, 12, and 13. Okay? If uh, the pastor or the preacher announces he's going to preach on the assurance of salvation, and he goes anywhere in 1 John, except for the verses we covered this morning, 1 John 4, 14, 15, 1 John 5, 1, 1 John 5, 11 through 13, if he's in 1 John chapter 1, 2, or 3, or the first part of 4, those are tests of fellowship. Amen. They're not tests of salvation. Okay? And that's kind of what I want us to just consider this evening. I want, to, I want you to think this through. Okay? Uh, I want us to consider the reason that uh, the book of 1 John in its entirety was written. Let's just pick it up here in uh, chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, we'll be looking for uh, the words joy and fellowship as we go through here. All right, the Bible says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, these are eyewitness accounts, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have what? Fellowship, Fellowship with us. And truly our what? Fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Everybody look up here for a moment. The reason, the purpose statements for the book of 1 John are given right here in these first four verses. The book of 1 John is a book about fellowship, proper fellowship, and it's about joy. And when you are in proper fellowship, your joy then will be full. Right? When you are not in proper fellowship, you can expect that your joy will not be full. Okay? That's how these two work together. And uh, so the book of 1 John is written to people who are saved. It's written to Christians. Okay? It's written to Christians even in chapter 5 that we were talking about this morning so that they may know for sure that they are saved. That they would have it settled, this issue of their salvation. And here, in 1 John chapter 1, he's setting up the themes for the book, and the themes for the book are fellowship and joy, okay? Now, let's take a look at this, 1 John chapter 1, we'll just pick it up right where we left off in verse number 5, and we'll find here our first test of fellowship. Again, we're considering tonight the assurance of fellowship. Do you have a proper fellowship with the Lord? All right, 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse number 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. all right? So God is what? Light. light. And how much darkness is in God? Zero. None. All right? Now, look at verse number 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. The first test on this issue of assurance of fellowship is where are you walking? Where are you walking? We see it there in verse number 6. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If I was to um, have followed you around uh, everywhere you went for the last week, where would you have taken me? Now, I don't know where you, where you went. You don't have to tell me where you went. All right? I don't know what you did, and you don't have to tell me what you did. But I can tell you this. If you would have been ashamed to have me with you at any point in time, then you have been walking about in darkness. Right? That, that word there, to walk, it literally means to just walk around in. To walk around in darkness. Right? Where have you been? If I were to follow your footsteps, where would it lead me? You know, footsteps are rather revealing. I was up in uh, Canada um, working at a Bible camp up there one summer, 
And uh, we kept having something that was getting into the dumpsters at night and just making a mess of the trash. And uh, I was getting really aggravated because the first thing I have to do in the morning is go pick up all the mess, you know, that this, this creature, this varmint, uh, was causing and just ripping the trash open and spreading everything out. I couldn't figure out exactly what it was, but if I could figure out what it was, then maybe I could figure out what to do about it, right? Well, it rained one night, and all over the dumpster were prints, tracks, and then I knew what it was. It was a raccoon, right? It was a raccoon, and it was getting down in there, and it was having its way with the trash, and well, needless to say, then I figured out what to do, and, and uh, we're being recorded, so maybe I won't just give you all the specifics, but let's just say we didn't have very many issues for too many days longer after that, all right? You know, tracks are real, really revealing. Uh, it reveals where you've been. It reveals what you are. You know, where have you been walking? You know, it doesn't really matter what you say, okay? The Bible says here, if we say that we have fellowship with Him, but we are walking about in darkness, we lie, and we do not the truth, okay? So it is possible for us to even deceive our own selves. It is possible for us to think that we are in fellowship with God, to even talk uh, to people and to claim that we are in fellowship with God, while at the same time walking in darkness. And if that's the case, you're deceived and you're deceiving others into thinking that you're walking in the light when in fact you're walking in the dark. You see how this test works? It's a test of fellowship. Listen, how much darkness was in God? None. 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 Okay, so if you have darkness in your life and you're permitting it to stay there and remain, then one thing I can tell you absolutely based upon the truths of Scripture is that you are not in fellowship with God as you might think that you are. Because you have darkness in your life and you are continuing to walk about in that darkness. Okay? Now the Bible gives us the answer to that. What should we do if that is the case? We'll, we all know that we have sin. Chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is what? Faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when that happens, guess what returns? The fellowship and the joy. You know, you don't have joy if you're walking about in darkness. You don't have fellowship and you don't have joy. But John wrote the book of 1 John so that we would know that we can have fellowship and that we can have joy. And so let's not be walking about in darkness. Don't, don't, don't you like proper fellowship? Don't you like joy? Who doesn't want joy in fellowship? By the way, just a self-diagnostic test. If you find yourself without fellowship or not in fellowship and you find yourself without joy, those are indicators that something's wrong. Go looking for it. Ask God to reveal it to you. Do what's necessary to have the fellowship and the joy restored. Okay? Hey, that's one test, all right? That's chapter one, all right, that we looked at here of the many different tests that there would be uh, to discern this issue of the assurance of fellowship. All right, let's look in 1 John chapter 2. We'll look in verses 3, 4, and 5. All right, the Bible says here, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, here it is again, this verbal uh, idea coming out, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Could you help me out? Can you tell me what test number two is for the assurance of fellowship according to these verses? What is it? Obedience. Obedience. Are you keeping his commandments? Right? Isn't this simple? Isn't it straightforward? You know, there's, there, there's a way to make the Bible really complicated. But that way is completely unnecessary. And, and we don't need it, right? It's just simple and straightforward, right? If you say that you are right with God and that you are in fellowship with Him, but you are not being obedient to the commandments of God that you know, you're deceiving yourself. And there is no fellowship. And you need to do what's necessary and right to get this fellowship restored so your true joy can be restored. Doesn't that just make sense? Right? You can't be in fellowship with God if you're harboring disobedience in your life. So where are you walking? Are you obeying His commandments? There's this test number one, test number two. Alright, look at verse number six of chapter two. Alright, here it is again. He that saith, this verbal idea here. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk. 
even as he walked. All right, so here's the third test. Are you abiding in Christ? All right? I, I really believe that the entire book of 1 John is a commentary on John chapter 15 where he discusses abiding in Christ. Okay? The whole book of 1 John is really a commentary on what it means to be abiding in Christ. Hey, it is impossible to be abiding in Christ and to be walking about in darkness. It is impossible to be abiding in Christ and not keeping His commandments. It's absolutely impossible. Okay? So, so far we have three tests. Now, how many tests were there for salvation? One. All right, what is that test? What did you do with who? The Son. All right? But there's lots of different tests for fellowship. Okay? Are you abiding in Christ? All right, let's look in 1 John chapter 2. Verses 9, 10, and 11. All right, the Bible says there, again, considering this issue of fellowship, he that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Can I tell you what this verse is not saying? This verse is not saying that if you hate another Christian, you obviously aren't saved and you need to get right with God so you can be saved. That's not what this verse is saying. I have heard it preached that way more times than I care to remember. This is not about salvation. This is about fellowship. Listen, it is impossible for you to be right with God. It is impossible for you to be in fellowship with God if you're hating another brother in Christ. It's impossible. God makes a huge deal out of forgiveness. Listen, if you will not forgive those people who trespass against you, the Bible says your Father will not forgive you. If your Father will not forgive you of those trespasses that you have been involved in, guess what? You definitely are out of fellowship with your Heavenly Father. And you need to do that which is right in order to restore that earthly relationship so then the heavenly relationship can also be right. Boy, there's lots of tests. You know, we're just in 1 John. We're just looking at a few chapters. You can go to any book in the Bible and find tests about fellowship. Okay, Any book. We're not going to cover them all. I'm just bringing up a few. Where are you walking? Are you keeping His commandments? Are you abiding in Christ? Do you hate a fellow Christian? All right. Let's look at the next one. 1 John chapter 5. Uh, chapter 2, excuse me. Verse number 15. You know the verse. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes the way and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It's impossible to be in fellowship with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if you love the world. Why? Because if you love the world, you're not loving the Father. The love of the Father is not in you. Doesn't, doesn't that just make sense? Okay? It, it, it does, it, it's not a test of salvation. Okay? It's a test for your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Do you love the world? You know, we were talking about the Lot this morning, right? You know, Lot would have failed a lot of these fellowship tests, wouldn't he? In fact, I took the test list that I talked about this morning from Lot, from all these verses in 1 John. Okay? He would have failed all the fellowship tests, but you know what? He would have passed the salvation test. Okay? He didn't have any joy in his life. His life was miserable, and his life was wretched. And he ended up in the hills getting drunk and actually committing incest with his daughters and giving birth to two nations that still persecute... Israel to this day is a miserable wretch of a human being. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to meet him. But I'll tell you what, his life had no joy. And he had no fellowship with the God who saved him. What a miserable way to live. We ought not live that way. You know, let's do everything that it takes to be in a right fellowship with our Heavenly Father so that we can have the joy uh, that is there that God intends for us to have. You ever meet a Christian and you just wonder if they're really a Christian because they're just always just in this terrible mood and they never smile and their 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 lips always curve the wrong way and they always look like death warmed over? Right? You've met those people, right? Where's the joy? 
I mean, to me, I, I meet these people and they just scream out to me that something is wrong with them in their life and they are not in proper fellowship with their God. They are not in proper fellowship with their Savior because if they were, they'd be joyful. You ever met a Christian who's just joyful? And you think, wow, man, that lady's got it all together. That man, he's got it all together. He really knows and loves his Lord. Yeah, yeah. He's got proper fellowship. And his joy or her joy is full because there's nothing between them and the Savior. You know, you can be that way too. You can be that way. You can have that joy. You can have that fellowship. But you need to be obedient to what you know from the Word of God. And be looking in here and digging and finding out about who Christ is and what He expects of you so that you can do the things that you need to. Look in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 27. We'll look at another test here. The Bible says, But the anointing which ye have received of Him abideth in you. But the anointing, this is talking about the Holy Spirit. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. This is talking about the... Um, uh, illuminating ministry of the Holy Spirit. You ever been reading your Bible and um, you, you maybe you've read that passage a hundred times or whatever it is, you know, some something that's fairly familiar to you and, and something new just jumps off the page at you? Does that, has that ever happened to anybody? Right? Oh, don't you love it when that happens? Right? You, do you know what that is? That is the Holy Spirit of God revealing truth to you from the Scriptures. Woo! I love it. That's good stuff, right? Are you being illuminated by the Holy Spirit? Is He revealing truth to you? Hey, that's a, that's a sign that you are in proper fellowship with Him. And if you're having that, then guess what? You're going to have joy in your life. If you're not, it may be a sign that you're not having fellowship. and That joy may not be full in your life. All right? Um, let's see here. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse number 2 and 3. I'm just kind of walking my way through the book here. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Right? Are we purifying ourselves in hope of the return of Christ? Right? There's a lot of study on prophecy. You're studying the book of Revelation right now, right? As you study the book of prophecy, it should be creating a desire for you to prepare for His return. And if you are going to prepare for His return, then you are going to seek to purify your life before Him. If you are doing those things, then you are in proper fellowship with the Lord. Right, Charlie? It's pretty simple. Okay? And you'll have joy. We can keep going, all right? We can keep going. You can keep going throughout the book of 1 John. And when you're done, you can go to Philippians, and you can start there. And then you can go to Galatians, and you can go there. And you can go to 1 Corinthians, and you can go there. You can go to any book in the Bible, and you can find tests about fellowship. You can find tests about joy. Okay? How many tests are there for salvation? There's one. What have you done with the Son? He who hath the Son hath what? He who hath not the Son hath not what? It's pretty simple. How do you know if you're in fellowship with the Lord? Well, that is a bit more complicated. Why is it more complicated? Because it's talking about a relationship. And relationships are just complicated. Okay? There's a lot of different areas that are involved in a relationship. Okay? And that's what we're finding here in this issue of fellowship and this issue of joy. Okay? I used a couple of illustrations this morning. And I want to use them again, all right? And uh, do you remember what the first one was? We talked about marriage, right? How, how do you prove that you're married, okay? And what was it that we decided that you needed to have to prove that you're married? The record. What was it? The record, right? And what was the record? The marriage license. the marriage license, okay? Now, let me ask you a very different question, okay? How do you know that your marriage relationship is good? Can I tell you what you should not do? You should not go and get your marriage license and hold it up and say, look, I've got the record. We obviously have a great marriage relationship because I'm married. 
Well, that wouldn't make any sense, would it? Okay? Um, maybe you should ask yourselves some other questions. Maybe you should evaluate your love for the other person. Okay? Maybe you uh, should evaluate whether or not you're living together. <laughs> okay? um, maybe you should look at uh, whether or not you share your finances. And a myriad of other questions that you uh, could ask. Maybe you should ask yourself how you feel about your spouse. Okay? But listen, the record doesn't do anything right, to define whether or not your relationship is good. Okay? You with me here? It's a different animal altogether. All right? Now, let's move on to the second question. Do you remember what it was? Car. Car. Okay? Now, from this morning, how do you prove that you own the car? You have to have the record. And what's the record, Shamir? A car registration, a title. Okay? All right? Now, let me ask you this question. How do you know that you love your car? Can I tell you what you do not do? You do not go and you do not get the title. And you do not hold up the title and you say, Look, I love my car. I have the title. Is this great? Right? You don't do that. Okay? If I were to ask you questions about how much you uh, love your car, do, do you love your car because you drive it? Of course, you know, if you loved your car, you probably would drive it. I don't know, some people probably love their car so much, they won't drive it. And they leave it parked in the car because they don't want to get it. They leave it, leave it parked in the car. They leave it parked in the, in the, in the carport or the, or the garage because they don't want to drive it and get it dirty, right? You love your car, it's obvious because you're washing it and detailing it. And man, it's just spick and spick. Maybe you know that you love your car because you do look really cool behind the wheel. Right? Or whatever it may be. Okay? It's completely different. It's completely different. The relationship versus ownership. Okay? There. How do you know that you're in fellowship with God? Can I tell you what you don't do? You don't go and find the record of your salvation and say, Look, I'm saved! I am in a right fellowship with God. Things are good. Everything's perfect because I have the record of my salvation. No. That doesn't make any sense, does it? How do you know if you're in proper fellowship with God? Well, there's a lot of tests, aren't there? There's a lot of probing questions that a person can ask themselves from the Scripture. Probing questions like, where are you walking? Are you being obedient? Are you being illuminated by the Holy Spirit of God? Do you love the world? All these probing questions that you would have to ask yourself. How many tests are there for salvation? Repetition is a good method of learning. Right? How many tests are there for fellowship? I don't know. A lot. Right? So let me ask you this question. While I've been preaching on this issue of fellowship and being in a right relationship with your Savior, has the Holy Spirit of God put His finger on some area of your life? And you know exactly what it is. If so, He has graciously pointed out to you something that is blocking that fellowship. Something that's blocking that joy. Listen, I have no idea what it is. But if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, I know exactly what it is, boy, won't you get it right with God? He loves you and He wants you to be in fellowship with Him. He wants you to have that joy that's intended. Okay? And I hope that you'll do that. I'm going to ask my wife to come to the piano and we're going to uh, sing Nothing Between. My soul and the Savior. What's the uh, yeah, page number? Huh? Two twenty-five. No, I don't know if that sounds right. Either. I mean, we're gonna find the page number. Okay, so uh, once we get that. Three twenty-one. Page three twenty-one. You will go ahead and stand to your feet. Page three twenty-one. I'll pray in just a moment. Nothing between my
my soul and my Savior. I, I hope you'll be able to sing this song and mean the words that are there. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the time that you've given us tonight uh, to look into your word. Uh, Lord, we just thank you uh, for the instruction that it provides. And just thank you that uh, your word is clear and that it's meant for us to understand and that it's meant for us uh, to apply uh, to our lives. Father, I pray that when we leave this building tonight, that every person will know for sure that they're saved and that every person will know for sure that they are in fellowship with you. Father, you've given us uh, the diagnosis, the cure for, for, for Lord, uh, lack of fellowship, and that's just uh, to confess our sins. And, uh, Lord, we know that you're faithful and just to forgive us, Lord, if we will meet your conditions. And so, Lord, if there's a need for that tonight, I pray uh, that business would be done here in this time of invitation. Father, we love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. Page 321.